Have you got the time? Welcome back to Got the Time. Thanks for joining us. I wanted to take a look at something we all kind of take for granted on our watches, uh, the loom. Uh, for some of you new to automatic watches, uh, you may not know too much about how these hands and indices glow. So let's take a quick look at what makes our watches so interesting at night. Nature has many examples of glowing or phosphorescent things. From plants to animals, the glowing tides are an amazing example of this where the phosphorescence is often caused by algae suspended in the water that emits a glow whenever it's jostled either by the tide or a boat going through or a fish. Uh, the deep sea is also home to many forms of bioluminescent life. So what makes our watches magically glow in the dark? Automatic watches have no battery, so it's not powered that way. So what form of wizardry is at work here? All right, time for a brief science lesson. So the ability of materials to glow in the dark is called phosphorescence, which is a type of photoluminescence. Photoluminescence is the ability that some materials have to emit light after their exposure to light. So light is composed of energy known as photons. The photon is a quantum particle of the electromagnetic field. While the exact quantum mechanical description of photoluminescence is complicated, the basic idea is, if an electron orbiting an atom in a certain material absorbs a photon, it will be excited to a higher energy state, and when the electron relaxes to its ground state, it emits a photon which we see as visible light. Here's what I heard. Blah, 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 sign, sign, sign. In the watch world, there are different types of loom emitting various colors. But let's start in the beginning, however, when illuminated watch dials could be very detrimental to your health. So the most infamous example of misunderstanding the materials used to make dials glow is the use of radium. The so-called radium girls were female factory workers who contracted radiation poisoning from painting watch dials with self-luminous paint. The painting was done by women at three different factories, and the term now applies to the women working at those facilities. One was in Orange, New Jersey, one in Ottawa, Illinois, and one in Waterbury, Connecticut. These were in the, uh, around 1917 and 1920. The workers, being told that the paint was harmless, were instructed to point their brushes on their lips in order to give them a fine tip. So they kind of just put the tip in their, in their mouth and just kind of twisted it and the, uh, their saliva would make the point very fine. The woman in each facility ingested deadly amounts of radium after doing this countless times daily, as the paint was made from powdered radium, gum arabic, and water. Among the first to see numerous problems among these dial painters were dentists. So dental pain, loose teeth, lesions, ulcers, and the failure of tooth extractions to heal were some of these conditions. Many of the women later began to suffer from anemia, bone fractures, and necrosis of the jaw, a condition now known as radium jaw. Their story was also made into a film of the same title in 2020. Another radioactive form of loom, tritium, which was more common back in the day, has a half-life of 25 years and will glow for a very long time before it finally becomes so weak that it's hard to see. Tritium has become less common in more recent times, although it is still used by some brands. An example is this Marathon watch here. The tritium is contained in tubes applied to the dial instead of being painted on. Most watches today do not use radioactive loom. The luminescence glows from being charged by light. So when fully charged, most watches tend to glow the brightest for about four to 12 hours before the luminescent glow loses some of its brightness, although not all of it. So all that being said, what are the different colors of loom and do those colors actually matter? So different watches have different colors of loom as we know. Most commonly seen are the green and the blue. Different types of loom emit different colors. So C3 Superluminova, which is the brightest, gives that green yellow sheen as it glows. 
Another common luminescence is BGW9, which is rated as the second brightest. That emits the blue light. Loom is available in all different colors. However, certain colors are not best suited for the application. The further you stray from the classic blue or green colors, the weaker the loom will be in general. If you've heard of Seiko Lumabrite Loom, it's for the most part C3 Loom rebranded, but it is also very, very bright. So do the colors matter? Yes, the colors matter, but it's not that simple. There are specific kinds of loom that give off different colors and carry different strengths. The further you stray from that yellow, green, and the blue, you can expect a reduction in the amount of strength and the amount of time that watch will glow at night. But if you're going just for aesthetics, choose the color you like. Most likely you're not gonna need that watch to glow the entire night. I tend to be gravitated more towards a combination use of different types of loom on the same dial or bezel. It really makes the differentiation between the bezel, the second, the minute hands, the uh, hour markers, uh, it really makes it uh, unique and pop at nighttime. Of course, the standouts are the fully loom dials, like wearing a flashlight on your wrist when these are fully charged. Some companies get extremely creative with what you can do with loom. Finally, to sum it up, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this video illuminating. If you had any questions, I really hope I was able to shed some light on those. And if you did find this informative, please go ahead and leave me a glowing review in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Stop laughing. It's not fun.